You can now get a 30-day trial to experience The Athletic for free. Visit the link in the description below to try it now. In April 2019, in the early evening before the Manchester derby, a thunderstorm rolled over the city. Manchester United would lose 2-0. The game's enduring symbol, however, would be the torrent of rainwater which would leak through the stadium's roof ahead of kickoff and cascade onto the seats below. It was as a symbol of neglect and of how the biggest club stadium in England, once the envy of the entire country, has been allowed to deteriorate. Now, leaks were nothing new. Back in 2012, when Old Trafford was being used as a venue for that summer's Olympic football tournament, supporters had to dodge a torrent of water that rained down off the north stand ahead of a match between Spain and Morocco. The drainage issues have subsequently been fixed, but to many, these were embarrassing reminders of a lack of progress, of the Glazer family's failure to modernise the stadium. Or actually to change much at all. The Glazers have owned Manchester United since 2005, but while the most recent upgrade took place in 2006, that project, which involved adding second tiers to the northwest and northeast quadrants and raising the capacity by 8,000, was commissioned and approved before the Glazers took control. It means that nothing significant has happened in over 15 years. And it's made much worse by the fact that during the same period, a whole host of other clubs have opened new or improved stadiums. Arsenal have moved to the Emirates, Manchester City have significantly upgraded the Etihad, Liverpool have built a new main stand, and most recently Tottenham have moved into a state-of-the-art replacement for White Hart Lane. And around Europe, Real Madrid are currently renovating the Santiago Bernabeu at a cost of 795 million euros, and although on hold, Barcelona have plans for an expansion to Camp Nou. And back at Old Trafford, complaints from fans focus on familiar issues. The poor quality of the concourses, the catering facilities, and the absence of a big screen. One of the keys to the stadium's high capacity is narrow rows between seats, and while that might be an efficient use of space, many supporters, even those of a less than average height, complain of being uncomfortable during games. Some of the problems are much more embarrassing, though. Old Trafford has also had a long-standing rodent problem. In 2015, health inspectors from the local council criticised the club for failing to implement adequate procedures to control pests within the food areas in the north and south stands, with the report also advising that all food rooms should be inspected for possible pest entry points. Other issues are logistical, certainly regarding expansion. The south stand has remained in much the same state for nearly 50 years. It's less noticeable to television audiences because the cameras point away from it during live games, but it's single-tiered and noticeably smaller than the other three sides of the ground. However, upgrading is difficult. The stand backs onto a railway line and so adding any extra tiers or developing it in any meaningful way would involve bridging over the track. Not an insurmountable problem, but not a cheap one to solve either. In December 2017, it was reported that the latest scheme to renovate and expand the South Stand had stalled over project costs of more than £750 million. As of May 2020, it was also reported that all expansion projects relating to Old Trafford were on hold. And there's little financial necessity, or at least for bearing such cost. In the last season to be unaffected during the pandemic, United reported £110 million in matchday revenue, some way ahead of Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham and Chelsea. And the club also argue that they have committed significant funds to Old Trafford. In 2019, for instance, they pointed to £20 million worth of stadium investment, accounted for by £4 million on security upgrades, a further four to redevelop hospitality areas and 11 on improvements to make the ground more wheelchair accessible. Ahead of the 2018 season, they also refurbished both the home and away dressing rooms. But these are small changes. Fans continue to notice rust on the stadium. Photographers have often pictured mice that have run onto the pitch during games, and journalists remain frustrated by the outdated media facilities and the poor quality Wi-Fi. And that connectivity once caused a controversy between Paul Pogba and Jose Mourinho back in 2018. Mourinho reacted badly to an Instagram story posted on Pogba's account, which apparently showed the midfielder laughing after United had been knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Derby County on penalties. In fact, Pogba, who had been watching from the stands, had tried to upload his post an hour before, and the timing was just an awkward coincidence. Of greater concern, though, is the lack of future vision surrounding Old Trafford. 
According to a source quoted by The Athletic in May 2020, that represents a change in attitude from the ownership. When the Glazers first came, they had the intention of rebuilding Old Trafford. They were desperate to buy up all the land around the ground, but they've given up on the stadium. That seems to be because of feasibility and the potential cost. And that's an added frustration. While United have spent millions of pounds acquiring property in the area, it has never been developed. In a less than flattering contrast with Manchester City, who boasts the sprawling Etihad campus, United have no reserve or youth team mini-stadium and no grand facilities. Hotel Football, the most visible adjacent property, isn't owned by United, but rather in part by the group of ex-players known collectively as the Class of 92. So what's next? Well, according to a Daily Mail article from February 2020, the current state of Old Trafford would be off-putting to potential buyers should the Glazers ever try to sell the club. And with Manchester United's estimated valuation at over £3 billion, there are likely to be very few of those to start with. But with the effects of the pandemic, the recent collapse of the proposed breakaway Super League, which promised a 3.5 billion euro windfall for the participating clubs, the most visible emblem of Manchester United's rich history doesn't seem likely to benefit from any major restoration soon. If you liked today's video, please subscribe to TIFO to help us reach 1 million subscribers. The Athletic is home to some of the world's best sports journalists, including David Ornstein, Daniel Taylor, Ollie Kay, Amy Lawrence and Rafa Honigstein. There are journalists dedicated to each Premier League team, so every fan gets the coverage they deserve, not just the big clubs. And you can try it for free now for 30 days. See the link in the description.